Hi, this video is a review and tutorial for Longtail Pro in 2019 for beginners or experts. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you a, a metric that uh, a lot of people like to use in this video and sort of the pros and cons of that metric that I think are really important to consider when you are actually using this tool um, that can make a big difference between kind of your understanding of, of what's uh, what's really go going on. Um, it, the short of it for review is that I do like Longtail Pro uh, overall as a uh, keyword research tool. It does some really nice things and it's really good at, one thing it's really good at that even the Google keyword tool was not good at, which was uh, actually find, uh, suggesting relevant search phrases. The Google keyword tool is surprisingly poor at this. Um, and so the, um, the, you know, if you find one you like, like for example, I really like 16, BMX. I don't know what that means. I suspect that's like a size, probably a wheel size, probably in inches. That would be my guess. If I really like that, I could click this plus 20 and it would add 20 more words. Okay. Um, and uh, also, uh, the probably the, the two columns that I think you'll probably sh should probably spend the most time thinking about, other than like uh, you know the actual word, is the keyword competitiveness from zero to 100 and um, the volume. Okay. And so the keyword competitiveness is one of the ones where a lot of people, uh, I think they, they focus a lot on. So you wanna look at, okay, well, what is the least competitive search phrase? Um, so actually we got BMX and what we can do is we can also include search volume. Let's do, make sure it's greater than, I don't know, 37. Just to pick a number so we don't get like the super low volume ones. Okay, um, and so this number is the number that I think is, good under some circumstances and poor under others. And so I'm gonna show you some of how to kind of confirm um, if this number is real. So we're gonna take a couple examples. Um, uh, and I'm gonna show you, um, actually before I do that, let's, uh, I'll show you kind of like starting from scratch. So let's actually, um, let's go, let's say we were gonna create like, a, I think this would be good for like an Amazon product. Um, I do actually like, a, I think, I don't know, I've been thinking about doing like a gluten-free thing. I, I don't know. I, I have a family member who's gluten-free, so let's just look at like a, let's, let's just say gluten, we'll, we'll just start a new project. I've actually been meaning to do this, so I'll go ahead and do this. So we'll do gluten-free, all right. Let's, uh, maybe we'll come back to the, the bikes one. So what we do is here we do gluten-free bread. Um, gluten-free bread mix. This is from, you know, I know gluten-free, uh, uh, pancake, pancake mix. Let's go here and let's find some other ones. Gluten-free uh, pasta, that's actually really good. Gluten-free pasta. Um, gluten-free spaghetti, I can spell spaghetti right. Okay, you can only do five at a time and it's saying I'll pull 20. And I'm on the lowest plan, which means I get 800 for 24 hours. It's exceedingly rare that I bump up against that. And you know, if you do 800 in a day, well, you've kind of done what you uh, are supposed to do. Okay, so it's still pulling in some of that stuff. So we'll come back here and we'll see if we can find a few more. Um, ooh, gluten-free cookies. Gluten-free cookies. Let's go ahead and click retrieve. We'll go to a few others. Um, gluten, maybe gluten-free cake. Um, I know that like gluten-free gravy, actually gravy is typically not um, gluten-free. If you don't know what gluten-free is, it's like basically wheat. It's what is inside wheat. And there's a, a very serious allergy that some people can have. Uh, and I do have family members. There's a very real allergy. Now I think there's a lot of people that cut it out um, and they don't like have to cut it out, but um, you know, that's, that's, that's your choice. Uh, okay, so let's pull one more in. Um, gluten-free, let's just go actually cut. Oops, uh, gluten-free gravy. Oh, uh, gluten-free flour. Let's do this, okay, this is enough. It'll probably suggest quite a few here. Okay, so now probably what uh, what my instinct tells me to do is to sort by, oh, what's the least competitive? Um, and I do like to, uh, let's include, let's make sure that everything is at least, has something. I kinda wanna filter out like the really low volume ones, which doesn't look like there's a lot. Um, okay, so gluten-free yeast bread. Yeast-free bread, okay, that's interesting. Gluten-free bread machine, that's a good one. Um, vegan gluten-free cookies. 
gluten-free almond flour bread, gluten-free set. Look at this, this is huge. Here's what we can do. We can also do kind of look at this kind of from a different angle. So I don't know why it's doing BMX here. Sometimes it kind of seems to jack up. What we're actually going to do is we're going to do uh, keywords. Uh, no, we want to do keyword competitiveness um, less than. Let's do. Let's just do like 42. No, let's do. I like the. Uh, 38 and then what we'll do is we'll sort by search volume. So there's kind of two different angles you can go here. Uh, so gluten-free pizza I don't know, This is not really one that we'd want to we'll probably want to delete this gluten-free uh, Banana bread. Okay, so let's actually take a look at these competitiveness now. This is where I, I Think you can't just like it, it's it's very useful to be able to kind of like sort um, By like what's competitive and what's not competitive. Let's actually remove this right here. These tend to be pretty high volume. So what we're going to do is we're gonna actually going to do like get some of the high ones. Like what is super competitive? All right. So let's take a look at one of the ones that it says is very low. A gluten-free yeast bed bread. Okay. So I think on the low end they tend to miss. Um, they tend to miss. Be, be incorrect in, in a lot of cases in, in my experience they're not it's not completely accurate uh it's it's not completely wrong either and so like actually sorting by it is not is is is, use, is still useful but imperfect so you just need to know this okay so what i'm really looking for the first thing i'm going to look for is root referring domains i believe that pulls this from majestic so um the fact that there is one on here a clean um let's go ahead and double check that a clean so the fact that a clean bake Dot com. Let's see if it actually has three referring domains on um, air hefts. No, see that's incorrect. Okay, so it, it pulled the data wrong um, somehow. Um, it, it, it's pulling this in, and so that's it's giving up some bad data here. Still, you have um, 181 here. They do have bread. Can't tell exactly what that is. Bre oh, it shows in the bottom left. Breads from Anna. So the fact that they have bread in their domain name, okay, that's helping them a lot. Uh, so we're looking for here for true low competition is uh, things that are well well under a thousand referring domains. And like if this really was three, then that would be fantastic. And I would say that this actually you know is a, a good estimate. But this three is off, and so in this case, this is a really great example. This number is definitely wrong. Um, but e even if this if all these numbers were accurate, I still think a lot of times their, their calculation is still wrong. Um, and the fact that this is not bad, this is not like super low competition, uh, but it's not super high competition either. Uh, so I would definitely say that this is higher competition than it, than it shows, but not like super, super high competition. Let's check out a few more. Okay, so Bread and Machine Mom, it didn't even pull, uh, it didn't even pull this. So, it, and they also have Bread Machine. We're looking at gluten-free Bread Machine. So let's actually check out breadmachinemom.com. It's a pretty good, uh, probably reviews a bunch of bread machines and we're looking at 160 referring domains. Um, now that that is uh that's not bad, but I mean she has bread machine in her domain name. Okay, bread machine pros 88. Again, they have it in their domain name. 199 gluten free in their domain name. 104. Okay, this is the first one. So this is this is a much more accurate calculation, I think. I think this one's significantly less competitive than the previous one that it marked as 26. Okay, uh, and you know you do also have to kind of consider okay what are kind of the titles and URLs um, beyond the domain name. So if they are if if like let's say the referring domains were high, but in the titles and URLs they didn't really have like gluten free bread machine, um, or you only saw it in a few of them, then that would be a a, a, a realistic um, measurement of low competition. Um, it's it's not just about the referring domains. Uh, let's check out a few more. Um, okay, so this is saying 27, but I'm looking at this and they are all over a thousand. This is terrible. This is a terrible calculation. Vegan gluten-free cookies. Um, unless like, the, again, so vegan gluten-free cookies, vegan gluten-free cookies, uh, gluten-free vegan cookies. They've got a bold in the URLs as well. Um, I do not know why they, they marked this as 27. This is this is this is very competitive. Um, I would not go after this and think, oh, it's low competition. Let's check out what some of the ones they marked as high competitive. 
Um, and they tend to get this right better. Um, and so let's look at the referring domains here. The lowest one is 2570. And they actually have it's glutenfreeliving.com. Okay, so that's actually, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Um, and so gluten-free diet, we've got it in the title. The title, I mean, this is Mayo Clinic, WebMD, Beyond Celiac. So celiac is the disease. Um, and so it's, it's strict, the disease that makes you like the, the more, ex, the most extreme kind of sensitivity to gluten um, is called celiac disease. So it's, it's just this, don't, this actually celiac in the domain name does give them some credit for gluten-free because it's just so highly relevant. Um, at the gluten-free diet, gluten -free. oh, this is the first one where like actually like the diet isn't in the domain name, but again, it's celiac.org. Oh, it's interesting. It's just so relevant. Um, Okay, so this is legitimately like super high competition. Um, again, like the lowest referring domains is 8,600, which is just incredible. Gluten-free foods. So you get celiac.org, Healthline, WebMD. Okay, so, uh, you know, compared to, let's see, this one that I thought they got wrong. I mean, it's still, it's still accurate in that this is less competitive than like gluten-free foods. It's just like, yeah, of course. I'll try one more diet benefits. Okay, so you have one under a thousand, and it doesn't have it in the domain name. Uh, this is, and you're showing a little bit less competitive. I'd say this is sig actually significantly less competitive. It's not like one point less competitive than gluten-free foods. It's, it's significantly, but you still have like Mayo Clinic and health.harvard.com. So it's still very competitive. Check out a few of the other ones that they said were low competition. Almond flour bread. Okay, so next, you also have to consider like the sheer volume of, of them that are under a thousand, all of those. Um, they all seem to have it like in their titles. Mm, not in the domain name, not in the domain name, not in the domain name, not in the domain name. They're free in their domain name. Oh, I'd say this is, this is pretty accurate here. It's not super high volume. And I don't think this is like a great niche to go into, but I think it is something that you could uh, maybe target. So this one, 34. Hmm. Sal's pizza and more.com. That's interesting. Um, I suspect that this is uh, like they're for some reason, like when they search this, they use like a, a location that's close to that. So I actually would kind of eliminate that. And in that case, this is actually pretty, pretty competitive. Let's find one of their other lowest, like low, really low competition ones. Good BMX bikes. Okay, we'll go back to this one. Um, I don't think this is very accurate. It, it's it's okay. Um, the lowest is 221. Um, you have BMX in the domain name, which it actually didn't highlight. Uh, BMX in the domain name, which again didn't highlight. Again, didn't highlight. You have a lot of BMX in the domain names, so that's uh, pretty competitive, um, in my opinion. But from a referring domain standpoint, not as competitive. Now, let's stick with the. Uh, Go all the way back here. Okay, I, actually, I think I've I think I've shown enough. So, kind of the overall, uh, it's very useful. I like how they they pull this stuff in. You can filter it pretty well, um, like any good keyword research tool. If you want to do kind of more filtering and playing with the data, I highly recommend you export it to as a CSV, um, and then you open it in Excel. That's going to be really useful, and you're going to be able to do like uh, auto filters. You know, look that up if you don't know what that is and kind of filter out, do more filters at once um, and sort and filter a, a little bit more streamlined. Um, but it's pretty good at finding keywords. And overall, I, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I'm going to put a link down below uh, where you can get a 14 day free trial. Um, it will be an affiliate link. So if you do click through, I do get a little bit of money. It's not like going to you know make or break me, but um, I would appreciate that, especially if you like this video and you got some value out of it. Um, also, if you liked it, click like uh, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, drop a line in the comments. I do respond to comments um, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions that you may have. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.